What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is one of the first in a, what is going to be a long line of videos that I'm doing that were request, fundraiser request. Um, we were raising money for the bail project just a month or so ago. And one of the requests was to talk about the DC Comics heroine, Bumblebee. That's right. We are going to talk about this character. We're going to break down her origin, her powers, all that stuff right now. But first, wash your damn hands and let's hit that intro. Word the wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful adrift in her purple lies. You can't see me, you Stevie. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. Before we get started, if you want to see more awesome comic book videos like this, this one, it only takes two clicks to become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. Click, click. Now, I'm going to go and be brutally honest with you guys, and uh, I, I want to give a trigger warning. Just in case we have any Karens that are watching this video, I want you to know that we do not mean Karen in this video as a pejorative. However, if you hear me say it in any other video, it likely is. Anyways, on with the video. Bumblebee, real name Karen Beecher, first appeared in Teen Titans number 45 in 1976, and then later debuted as Bumblebee in Teen Titans number 48, the following year in 1977 and was created by Bob Rosakis and Irv Novick. Karen Beecher is an oddity in superhero origin stories because her debut had literally nothing to do with her but her at the time boyfriend, now husband, Mal Duncan, who at the time was the Herald. In Teen Titans number 48, in an effort to gas Mal up in front of the Titans so they would put some respect on his name, she created a Bumblebee stylized suit and attacked the Teen Titans, claiming Mal was hers for the taking and to try and get them to see the value, and she ran roughshod on the Teen Titans before making an escape. She would later apologize and explain to the team in Teen Titans number 49 that she simply thought the Titans didn't care about Mal and wanted to show them that he was worthy. Weird intentions, but well-meaning, I guess? And after apologizing, plus giving Mal an actual super suit, she was granted membership on the team. Karen Beecher originally lacked superpowers, the abilities she's often displayed were initially tied to a high-tech battle armor that gifted her with superhuman strength, speed, stamina, endurance, agility, and reflexes. This special suit also enabled her to fly by way of actual bee-like wings on the back of the suit. These same wings also made it possible for her to affect a sonic disruption by fluttering the wings as fast as possible. At one point in time, it was stated that she she could flutter her wings at a frequency strong enough to disintegrate in organic matter. This was later retconned. The suit was also capable of firing off electric energy blasts that replicated a bee's sting effect. And speaking of bees, the suit would also allow her to shrink in size to as small as six inches tall. She would later on become stuck in her shrunken state, but as a result of this, she would gain actual superpowers, mirroring the ones her suit granted her. This allowed her to fly on her own as well as generate a stronger version of her hypersonic blast. Later on, she would gain an even more intense version of this blast, but we'll get to that in a little while. She also wore a set of goggles themed after a bee's eyes that were equipped with ultraviolet vision, and she often used very bee-themed gadgets, namely among them a honey shot, which she would typically use Used to either bind someone in place or in the case of Mal Duncan, she once used it to clog his horn during his time as the Herald. Karen was also an exceptionally gifted engineer. We're never explicitly told what her exact field is in engineering. However, we are shown throughout her publication history that she was gifted enough to create the Bumblebee suit and all of its extra abilities and gadgets, as well as a suit for Mal's Herald persona. She's also quite knowledgeable in all fields of science. And if that weren't enough, she's also a talented writer. 
After Teen Titans number 53, where the team disbands, Karen and Mal went on to be married, thus making Karen's name Karen Beecher Duncan. And they both, quotey fingers, retired from being superheroes. To fill in the time, Karen went on to work with Star Labs engineering non-lethal weapons. None of that would last since, you know, superheroes. She would later don the Bumblebee moniker again during the short-lived Titans West and would retire yet again once that dissolved. She would then later return to help the Titans stop Dr. Light and eventually participate in the events of Infinite Crisis. She would later in her career be contacted by Barbara Gordon in Birds of Prey number 100 to join the titular team, but before she actually could join the team, it was already disbanded. Earlier, I mentioned Bumblebee being stuck in a shrunken state. This was during the fallout of Infinite Crisis, where, thanks to Adam Strange's Zeta Ray, her physiology was permanently altered, and she remained in a shrunken state until roughly a year later in the pages of Doom Patrol, where Dr. Niles Calder was able to develop medication that would allow her to no longer suffer the seizures and cardiac arrest due to her new found permanent size. She would go on to join the Doom Patrol as one of its members, and over time, she slowly grew, eventually reaching seven inches tall. On a side note, the height that she lost was temporarily transferred to Hawk Girl, making her 25 feet tall. Much like Black Lightning, she originally debuted as a normal human, using technology to affect superpowers. Also like Black Lightning, after a continuity shift, she too became a metahuman, though for her, it's Instead of it being Crisis on Infinite Earths, it was both Infinite Crisis and then later the New 52. Speaking of Black Lightning, one thing that's of particular interest is that in the history of comic books, black superheroes were not particularly common back during the 60s and the 70s, and we know that it wasn't until 1966 where Marvel debuted the Black Panther in Fantastic Four issue number 52, and we know that DC wouldn't give a black superhero their own comic book until 1971 with Green Lantern Jon Stewart. And this actually kickstarted a trend that saw DC DC, just like Marvel, slowly introduce more black characters onto the scene. And just like what was typical at the time, it wouldn't be until Marvel had debuted some black superheroines of their own that would rise to prominence in regards to Storm and Misty Knight both revealed in 1975. It wouldn't be until roughly two years later that we would actually see Karen Beecher be depicted as a superhero, despite appearing in 1976. Despite being a mainstay in DC Comics, Karen Beecher was woefully absent in the New 52 era of DC Comics. Her history as Bumblebee, alongside Mal's as Herald or Guardian, were also erased along with the revamp. This was later undone when the two finally made their first appearance in New 52's timeline in Titans Hunt number one, shortly before DC Rebirth began. We'd later learn that Mal actually was a teen Titan in the past. Past, but he no longer remembered, thanks to Mr. Twister warping his memories. Karen wouldn't fare so well. Her history as a Teen Titan was left unrecognized, but as a consolation prize, she was revealed to be a metahuman with roughly the same powers as I mentioned earlier, and her and Mal now have a daughter together. But still, mm, that wasn't a good look, DC. That is something that I kind of find is incredibly controversial in regards to what DC did with the New 52 in their, I guess you would say, a half-assed attempt at fixing it. Memory loss around that time frame seemed to play a major part in both Mal and Karen's characterizations because it would just so happen that during DC Rebirth in Titans number 10, she would become a member of the Titans, but Simon of the Frightful Five would wipe her memory of Mal and her daughter from her mind. This obviously had a negative impact on their relationship, and she wouldn't get those memories back until Titans number 18. She would later leave the team in Titans number 19. Now, despite all this craziness and shenanigans with her history as of Doomsday Clock number 12, it is safe to say that Bumblebee's original continuity in history is back in place, but that's one of those things that is a very 
slippery slope to mess with in regards to DC Comics and all their wibbly wobbly timey wimey alternate reality multiverse shenanigans. It's just one of those things that I've always felt is incredibly sloppy about DC Comics. But once again, despite everything that happened with New 52, probably safe to say that she still has all of her powers and progression that she has gained up to this point, but her original continuity is back in place. There are alternate versions of Bumblebee that have existed in DC Comics, one of which was being a member of Cyborg's Titans East team in the Titans Tomorrow storyline, albeit she was back to wearing the super suit and back to her normal height. There is also a toddler version of her that also appears in the Tiny Titans series where she is the girlfriend of Plasmus, who is no longer a supervillain. Now, when it comes to media appearances, Bumblebee has quite a few media appearances to her credit, with her first being in the Teen Titans animated series, voiced by Takiya Crystal Kima. This version of Bumblebee is a mix of her original and current incarnations, not needing a suit to affect her powers, but retaining a somewhat modified version of the classic look. Bumblebee has also made a few non-speaking cameo appearances on Teen Titans Go! and cameoed in Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Bumblebee was featured in the DC Superhero Girls web series, voiced by Tila Dunn, something that caused Hasbro to try to block the sale of dolls based on this series due to their believing DC had indulged in trademark infringement on the name Bumblebee of Transformers fame. Hasbro filed a lawsuit in 2017 against DC Comics, but the dispute was later settled out of court for an undisclosed amount with the terms not being revealed even now. An interesting side note to this, despite DC's Bumblebee existing an entire six years prior to the Transformers character, since, you know, Bumblebee did debut in 1977 and Bumblebee of Transformers wouldn't arrive until 1983. Despite this, Hasbro obtained an official trademark on the name in 2015, hence the lawsuit. The suit was mostly filed to protect their toy sales, since at the time, the Bumblebee spinoff movie was soon to release with an entire line of toys to back it up. Once all that mess was settled, she once again returned as a main character on the 2019 edition of DC Superhero Girls TV series, voiced by Kimberly Brooks. Bumblebee also pops up in the Young Justice episode Targets, voiced by Masasa Moyo. An alternate universe version of Karen Beecher is briefly seen in Justice League Gods and Monsters, voiced by Kari Walgren. Karen makes a brief appearance in Teen Titans The Judas Contract, once again voiced by by Masasa Moyo, where she's depicted as an original member of the Teen Titans in a flashback. She doesn't make another appearance in the DCAU until its end with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War during a flashback where she's shown to have been killed by Darkseid's Doomsday Parademons. She's also appeared in a few video games. Bumblebee is an unlockable character in 2006's Teen Titans video game for PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube, and Microsoft Xbox, voiced by her Teen Titans series voice actress, Takiya Crystal Kema. Bumblebee is also a playable character in 2013's Young Justice Legacy on Nintendo 3DS, Sony PlayStation 3, and Microsoft Xbox 360 and PC, voiced by her Young Justice voice actress, Masasa Moyo. Now, normally when I do these videos, I like to pick someone who I think could play this character on the big or small screen, and the actress that has come to mind to me on this one is going to be none other than Kiki Lane, who is best known for her roles in If Beale Street Could Talk, Native Son, the upcoming Coming to America sequel titled Coming to America, and Netflix's recently released The Old Guard. I think that she could play that fierceness that, you know, we typically see in Bumblebee and maybe even deliver some of that sass we typically uh, seem to see delivered in regards uh, to Bumblebee's character. And really, that's about it. There's really not much else to explain there. Now, as for recommended reading for the character, I do recommend you check out, you know, of course, her earlier appearances in Volume 1 of Teen Titans, roughly issues 45 up until 53 when the team was disbanded. I also recommend Titans Hunt number one through eight, and last but not least, Titans under the DC Rebirth banner, which equates to roughly Titans Volume 3, issues number seven through 19. 
I would love to see this character, you know, and also, you know, Mal Duncan, because, you know, they are kind of a package deal, more or less. I would love to see her rise once again, as I said with the video that I did for Vixen, I would love to see this character rise to a higher state of prominence in DC Comics and comics as a whole. But honestly, with the notion that Hasbro owns the trademark for the name Bumblebee, we likely will not see that happen anytime soon, at least not without a name change. And I just don't see DC Comics going through the trouble or bothering. But anyways, I like the character and I hope you guys do too. Let me know. I don't know. Let me know. Did you did you know who Bumblebee was or are you today years old finding out about her? Wash your damn hands and sound off in the comments. So hey, you made it to the end of the video. Awesome for you. If you enjoyed this video and if you made it this far, I don't see how you didn't. Do me a favor. Hulk smash that like button. And if you want to see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. Also, feel free to go check out my Patreon where if you chuck in a buck, you can get early access to most of my videos up to a week early. And if you have time, make sure you swing by nerd901.com where you can find more of my content as well as other amazing stuff. Anyways, until next time, I love you 3000 plus ultra.